Greetings everyone. Hope all of you are having an absolutely fantastic day. So happy to be experiencing the first episode of our new Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous Let's Play with all of you. As was voted upon in the channel, we will be doing a Devil Mythic Path playthrough as Isaac from Castlevania. It was a close battle, but in the end, he pulled it out. I believe I've already released a build for what I plan to do with Isaac. We might end up changing it a tad bit. In fact, I know we will because I don't want to go so long without being able to add my dexterity modifier to damage. So we're going to do a slight adjustment, but for the most part, what I provided is going to be accurate for what I want to do. A couple of things I want to note and give me a minute. I forgot I need to actually pull up this build to make sure I'm following it properly. Um, to the best of my ability, I will, of course, try to drop episodes on a daily basis, but we all know that's not actually going to happen. Life occurs. I'm a busy man, so please bear with me while I do my best to provide this content to you in a timely fashion. I do want to make it clear, though, that unlike previous times when I would just drop my Let's Play episodes no matter what, whether or not this continues will be based upon the level of interest for the community. I used to do long Let's Play series where I was dropping episodes and only 50 people were watching it. It was absolutely killing my channel. And I definitely know now as a creator, don't do that. You're only hurting yourself. So uh, the barometer I use is 10%. As long as at least 10% of the channel is still interested in seeing this content, I will absolutely keep doing it. But if it drops below that and gets to the point where like only 100 people are watching it, then I'll probably go ahead and just stop because I don't want to spend hours making content that the vast majority of the community has no interest in actually watching. Uh, hope all of you understand. Outside of that, I'm absolutely down to go all the way with this, uh, 100 hours or whatever it takes. To be honest with you, Let's Plays are my favorite type of content. And when I first started my channel, that's the kind of content I strictly wanted to do, which you can probably tell by how oh, often I was doing it. them. I it took me a while filter. to realize that it's actually very difficult to create a channel that strictly revolves around Let's Plays. And that's why I kind of switched it up and do a coming. lot more uh, different things. But this kind of stuff that we're doing right now, to be honest with you, it's what I love doing the most. So really happy that, honestly, that the channel decided that they want to do this. And it's my honor and pleasure to bring this content to you. Let's go ahead and get started. Most of the time when cutscenes and things of that nature are playing, I'll try to be quiet so that the few of you who haven't played through Wrath of the Righteous yet can hear things clearly. And then when there's not dialogue or clutch scenes occurring, that's when I'll chime in a lot more. For those of you who might not have revisited the game since it first launched, they did add some additional voice acting to Act 1. So as you might notice here, this, this portion is almost fully voice acted, whereas before it was not. Healer, come quick! Hey, somebody! We got a wounded fighter. Can we get a healer over here? My, my, would you look at this? But why would you drag a wounded fighter into the middle of the festival square? Couldn't he be carted off somewhere else like, oh, I don't know, an infirmary or an accommodating ditch? <laughs> Make room, everyone. Step back. Now, what's the matter? What happened to him? The wound looks nasty. Who did this to him? Demons, prelate. We found him barely alive outside the walls of Canabris. The walls, you say? Enemy doesn't usually stray so close to the city. Must fortify the defenses. And you, hold fast. Don't die. We'll see you right. We'll get you patched up now. But first, you there, guard. Take his weapons. Bearing arms is not permitted during the festival. Wounded or not, everyone must abide by the rules. He can get his things back after the festival. Oh, Inheritor, leader of our troops, the sharpened edge of our blades and the unyielding strength of our armor. Iomade, I beseech you, grant your mercy. Heal his wounds. The magic envelops you, but your pain lessens only slightly. I won't give up that easily. Here, here. 
That's the Crusader spirit. My powers are not enough here. Someone call for Terendalev. You there. Yes, you. Stop dithering and gawping and make yourself useful. Go and get Terendalev. Prelate, surely there is somebody else here better suited to running yeah. errands. I'll get her. Terendalev. Has anyone seen Terendalev? Be quick about it before it's too late. Now, who are you? I don't remember seeing you before, and I have an excellent memory for faces. I'm a crusader. I came to fight demons. Oh, Iomade, save me from green recruits. <laughs> they come without a plan, without preparation, and they die before they even see their first real battle. I don't know whether to laugh or cry at the utter waste of it all. My dear prelate, please, for the sake of the festivities, stop interrogating this poor man. He has been through enough already. Go on, I'll take care of him. All right, as you wish. You are our protector, and a dragon at that. So I shall defer to your wisdom, but be on your guard. I've been informed he was wounded near Canabras. That means the demons are prowling just outside the walls, and the city is crawling with their spies. Others may be able to relax on this holiday, but not you or I. Not the defenders of this city. Muttering discontentedly, the old man walks off. I loose the grudging grip of pain. Cast off the veil of suffering flesh. Let light and life go forth in triumph to repel the skulking shade of death. There. Thank you for helping me. I accept your thanks, but my work is not yet done. Who are you? My name is Terendalev. I am the protector of the city. Are you really a dragon? You don't believe me? Perhaps I should retake my true form and engulf this square with my ice breath to win your trust. <laughs> Pay no mind to my current guise. I appear this way when I walk among the people. I would hamper the festivities if I tried to attend in my true form. What? What happened to me? I do not know yet. And that troubles me. I am not entirely sure what the demons did to you. This wound is no ordinary injury and it was inflicted by no ordinary weapon. I have rid you of your pain and restored your strength. But only time will allow you to heal fully. Can I go? Certainly. But be careful. I have managed to get you back on your feet, but I have not healed you fully. Alas, sooner or later, your pain will return. But do not be discouraged. You will recover, I promise you that. Tomorrow, come to the cathedral and say that you are expected by Terendalev, protector of Canabras. We will find a way to help you. But for now, put this out of your mind and enjoy the festival. They are all too rare in this time of war, and merriment is one of the best medicines. So to be honest with you, I'm not all that big a fan of the first part of this intro. It's all right, I guess. But when I compare it to, um, oh, wow, there's a stranger there. I never noticed that. There's a stranger at the initial festival. That's hilarious. Uh, compared to the intro for Kingmaker, I feel like that first start is stronger, honestly, and um, reads you a lot more for what you're going to do. Whereas with this, it's just like, okay, I've been introduced to a few characters, I'm at a festival already uh, then. It, it, it's okay. When you have the full context of the story, though, obviously, it becomes a lot more God's impactful. Me. So Raimi is here as well, of course. But the uh, second half of this uh, intro, man, absolutely outstanding. I just noticed that that's an outdoor there. I love a drink, me, especially when the city city's fitting the bill. What do you say? Another round? This part is fantastic.
The first time I played this game, I thought he said, you whore imposter. <laughs> Discari, Lord of Locusts, leave my city. Just sick. Look at that. Just absolutely insane. What a way to kick Let things off. Begin. This dude lops off the heads of dragons. Literally. Discari himself. Blimey. One minute we had a dragon. The next, bam, she was gone. Do. Fight or flee. If flee is your plan, let me help you out. I've got a scroll here with a good protective spell. I've seen you somewhere before. Yeah, you have. You owe me your life. I'm the one who found you outside the walls and brought you inside to be healed. I see they patched you up. Good thing they did it before the attack, or else you'd have been done for. Who is discarded? You must have got a good drubbing around the head, brother. Discari's a demon lord, the most fearsome enemy of all crusaders and all living things come to think of it. What's the situation in the Citadel? Who knows? Everything's on fire, crashing down around our ears. The place is crawling with demons. Looks like a whole army attacked the city. We're sitting ducks! Care to lend me a weapon? I'll try to fight the demons. Sure thing. Here, take this. Best crossbow I've got. The person who made it said it could pierce the hide of a demon lord even. Good luck! Try not to get eaten now! The halfling's words are drowned out by a terrible rumbling and the rustling of countless tiny wings. Oh, look at him. So monstrous. Just right off the bat, making it clear the forces you have to go against. Man snaps its jaws at the Lord of Locusts. Behold, Iomane. Behold the death I saw. And then on top of that, he has an equally monstrous weapon that can literally rip holes in the street. Just an absolutely fantastic way to kick things off and make it clear. The silver dragon Terendalev, the defender of Canabras, fell in battle. Hardly surprising, as she had to fight the demon lord Discari himself. He willed the land to part and swallow all who dared to stand in his way. But the war was still far from over. I like that they have Arilu serving as the narrator during those chapters because for a long time you never hear her voice. <laughs> so I at least was wondering, like, who is this chick <laughs> who keeps talking to me? All right, uh, what do we have here? We definitely need to fight defensively. We definitely want to use our sacred weapon. We're definitely going to need this. We will not need. This is Unholy Strike, right? Yeah, definitely will never need this. Axiomatic Strike. Deal extra damage to chaotic creatures. Every so often we might need this. Every so often we might need this. We'll never need this. Sometimes we'll need this. Anything else from here that I need to be aware of? Doesn't look like it. Spells. Uh, that's all the spells I have. Did it fill out my spell book automatically? It did. Um, what's in the backpack? I already got everything. We even have a crossbow. Never know when that will be useful and that's all she wrote let, actually let me do a full save me see love just in case i want to circle back here and let's do it oh, holy mother of a small woman with messy brown hair winces in pain uttering a stream of curses through clenched teeth she is pinned to the ground by a couple of weighty boulders hey hey stay with me you actually got pretty lucky you fell down into a black hole but at least you're not on your own. You've got a great companion. Everything's going to be just fine. Tell me something. Can you feel your legs? I feel them all right. Once, you know, do a little less feeling in them. My ankle's killing me. 
But my back seems to still be in one piece. My head, too. That's all that matters. Now, we're going to... Hey! Fancy meeting you down here. You're the one that Terendal have healed today, right? You aren't injured, are you? Will you help me get her out from under the boulders? Now, obviously, we're doing a Devil Mythic Path playthrough, and it's going to be evil. But, again, with Isaac, what the channel voted for is that we're going to start as a good person who's really trying to do the right thing and help people, but slowly he descends into evil. So, considering that, we are not going to choose the evil option. Uh, we're also not going to ask why we should help her, because Isaac automatically wants to help the weak and defenseless. I know he's terrible at athletics, so instead we're going to attempt a knowledge world check, even though there's nothing we have that would assist with this. We don't have to rely on brute strength for this. I'll try to find something to use as a lever. Excellent! You quickly find some suitable sticks and you free the wounded woman from the rubble without even breaking a sweat. <laughs> Look at you! It's good to meet someone who uses brains first and brawn second. Good to meet you too. Damn it all! I think it's broken. Oh well, I've had worse. I'll just make myself a splint out of something. Thanks for the help. I wouldn't have lasted long on my own stuck under there. I'm a Nevia Tiravade of the Eagle Watch. I was overseeing security at the Festival Square. I thought maybe spies or demon worshippers might have something nasty planned. What actually happened, though? Now that, I did not see coming. I don't think anyone could have been prepared for that. Well, I'm Sila, paladin by the grace of Iomade. I crossed the whole continent to come to Mendeb and fight demons. And, well, I've been fighting for a while now. I don't even want to think what might be happening up there in the city. Canabres has lost the protection of Terendelev, and of the Wardstone too, looks like. It's a relic without equal. It was placed here personally by Iomade's herald, with the goddess's blessing. I really wanted to go see it, to pray before it. But there's no point worrying about a stone when there are people dying in the streets. Yeah, things are looking grim enough, but don't lose heart. Wardstone or no, dragon or no. Canabres will never give in. Simple as. Well, we've introduced ourselves. What about you? I came here to fight the abyss. A fellow crusader! <laughs> Welcome, brother. This is great. I would have been happy to have any companion in this. But it's nice to be stuck down here with somebody who's my kind of crazy. <laughs> it's a good thing you've still got your faith. Because right now, to be totally honest, faith's probably the only thing we do have. Now then, I'll hobble my way out of here somehow. The city ain't far, only 30 paces or so. That's if you're going straight up, of course. I'm afraid we're gonna have to go the long way round. To summarize, there are three of us, with five working legs, three pairs of decent hands, two clear heads, and one made of wood. <laughs> That's mine. Underground monsters beware! <laughs> Anevia, you stay behind us. You're in no fit state to fight. If we do come up against anything, the two of us will try to manage on our own first. Well, onward! May the good deities lead us back to the open sky soon. Awesome. Look at that. Got our first party member just like that. All right. Um, Let us press on. We're not going to respect her just yet. Look here. Halron put all the confiscated weapons in this chest take a look maybe your thing survived the fall hopefully they did we'll check that out in just a minute collect loot i haven't played this in quite some time again it's all coming back to me very nice i hope that Who's continues there? the fine apparel of this young half off woman is torn and stained with blood dust and dirt however she holds herself with such dignity that you would be forgiven for thinking you were at a high society party and not in the dank catacombs under the city her fingers grip her rapier hip with confidence, ready to draw it at a moment's notice. At her feet lies a dead body, so mutilated that at first glance, it's hard to tell if it's animal or human. Relax, friend. We're, we're not demons or cultists. Don't poke my eye out with that thing, all right? We fell down here during the attack. I'm Sila, that's Anevia, and this is our new friend. We're looking for a way back to the surface. Really? I'm so ever glad to hear it. 
Allow me to introduce myself. I am Camellia. I was also in the square when... When... I can scarcely believe it. How did all those demons get into the city? I thought... Naively, it now seems, that the Wardstone protected us from attack. And Terendalev... I can't wrap my head around it. Not many could withstand a strike from a demon lord. Not even Terendalev. I can't argue with that. We're fortunate to be alive. Albeit underground. Daskari himself has come to Canabras. There's no mistaking that ugly mug. Terendalev tried to fight him, but what could she do against a near deity? Even the Wardstone was no help. Our city used to be protected by powerful forces, but now... Anivia shakes her head. We've seen how powerless they truly are. Henceforth, we shall have no one but ourselves to rely on, I suppose. Tell me more about yourself. Who am I? Just an ordinary citizen who decided to take a stroll through the square on the day of the festival. But that's not what you wish to know, is it? You most likely wish to know whether I'll be a burden should you ask me to join your group. No need to worry about that. I can assure you that I am skilled with a rapier, and I also possess some knowledge of magic. She touches the polished snake skull amulet that hangs around her neck. What happened to this poor man? Who is he? I don't know. He must have been in the square when disaster struck. I tried to revive him, but he was already dead, sadly. He didn't get these wounds from the fall. Be on your guard. Whatever killed him likely hasn't gone far. Hang on. I think I know him. His name's Aravashniel, the egghead from the library. He was a good lad, even if he was kind of stuck up. May his soul rest in peace. Do you want to join us? Certainly. Survivors should stick together. It's only sensible. Who knows what else could be prowling about in these caves? We need to keep moving. There must be a way back to the surface somewhere around here. That's right. It would be the height of foolishness to survive a demon attack only to perish under a pile of rubble. Let's see if this poor bloke has anything useful on him. Not to sound like a heartless brigand or nothing, but we kind of need all the supplies we can get right now. <laughs> all right, Amelia. All right, he doesn't have anything on him. Oh, my understanding is um, when she says his name was uh, Aravashanov, that that's actually like an Easter egg. I guess the tabletop version of Pathfinder, he's a more prominent character. But I've never played the tabletop version, so I don't know um, what that actually means. All right. Um, first thing I want to do is get Sela into the proper class. Let's go ahead and do that. So let's respect Sela. She gets 31 points. Party members usually get more points, or yeah, most of them get more points than the regular main character. We're gonna make her a ranger. She's gonna be a Sable Company Marine. Now we're actually gonna go ahead and give her five levels in this first, and then we're gonna do a respec. We're gonna cheat a little bit. What I actually wanna do long-term is she's only gonna have one level in this, and then the rest of the levels are gonna be in Paladin. But I can't do that now because we can't just have a level one beast with us for that extended period of time because its health won't get any uh, larger and it'll just get demolished the whole time. Uh, Paladins don't get their pet until level four, I think. I don't know why, I'm, I'm not seeing it. But, oh yeah, there we go, Divine Bond, so level five. So we're gonna have to gain five levels in Ranger first, and then we're gonna respec, um, actually six levels, and then we're gonna respec, take one level in Sable Company Marine, take five levels in Paladin, and do the rest of the game as Paladin as well. All right, um, so considering that, I guess there's no reason for her to specialize in charisma for right now, so she could just go with strength, and we can uh, give her a little bit of that. Um, I guess I, I really don't care what else she has. I mean, I guess we could just, this will give her a couple of attacks of opportunity, technically, do that, and then, yeah, whatever. All right, um, I know I wanted to have persuasion. She can have perception. She can take some trickery. She can have lower religion. Um, she can have uh, lower nature. She can have all this. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. Um, all right, first up, 
Um, she, what is my first fee here? One second. Let me look at what, what the way the bill is supposed to work. Uh, yep, weapon focus, and I'm actually going to take Glaive since we're not going to have a uh, soul sale. I don't have to worry about the two of them fighting for the best Glaives. And then, actually, um, in my build, I take Dazzling Display, so that will be ready later on for Shattered Defenses. But since I'm going to have to respect this anyway, I think I'm going to go ahead and take Combat Reflexes and take advantage of her extra charisma. Why not? Um, you know, why did I give her extra? I don't need her to have extra intelligence. I'm good on that. Um, take away one of these skills. She's not my knowledge world specialist, so that's fine. Glaive, combat reflexes, hippogriff companion. Cool thing about the hippogriff, at 7th level, it gets pounce. Uh, automatically do a full attack when charged. Obviously, that's fantastic. It has a flying attack that also counts as a charge. And at level seven, it also gets heavy landing. So it'll automatically attempt to trip all nearby enemies when our flying attack completes. Absolutely fantastic. Really looking forward to doing a full game with that pet available. All right. Um, speaking of the pet, it should have automatically come up and it war. did not. Let's save here and might need to load back up. No problem. One second. Boom, bam, 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 and there goes the pet. And we're going to open it up. We'll make it aggressor. So that means it'll automatically get power attack and it'll uh, cause enemies to bleed first time and hits them. Get multi attack later on. All good stuff. Uh, usually when I have a pet that trips, I try to take bully instead. This is what I would do for a wolf so that they would have trip and get access to uh, Fury's Fall, increasing their CMB. But the uh, Hippogriff actually gets a bonus to CMB equal to half of its level. In my experience, that was more than enough to get the majority of nearby enemies to fall. And so I didn't see a need uh, to go for... Uh, the bully archetype. So instead, we're going to go with aggressor. Now we're going to start with dodge because I plan to take this pet through the monk line of feats. Buck beat, most famous hippogriff I know. I really like the monk line of feats for um, my pets. Helps with their survivability. So this works for me. Oh, Rely wait. No, 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 no. Me. Not, that's not you. There we go. And I don't want you to have. Um, not just yet. Uh, you can accept expired rage. That doesn't matter yet, but it'll definitely matter later on. What's on your do mind? You have your defensive stuff. Do you not. Let's turn that on. Let's bring that down. Let's bring this down. What is this? Ghost touch spirit. Um, it deals damage normally against the corporal creatures. I'm pretty sure I don't have to worry about that anytime soon. I will soon. not falter. So, we and win he, she this doesn't war. need to worry about that because she's on top of the hippogriff. All right, let's see. The only thing I'm uh, irritated or worried about is trying to make sure that the hippogriff will fly in and do physical attacks uh, or do charges in, um, what is this called? while we're in real time with pause so we'll see how that works out because what i don't want is it just walking forward everywhere it's supposed to fly in and make it happen don't shut the door you know what actually am i is there a way to turn that off language save settings tutorials basic tutorial here we go the vast majority of stuff i remember on my own uh, hopefully I don't regret this, but I'm pretty sure I won't. I do not have to turn these mode. Let's the look at that. There we go. There we go. There we go. There we go. That's what I want to see. I want to see you dive on in there and make it happen, Captain. Excellent. Dive on in and make it happen. Happen. All right. And, of course, we want to pick up to render less scales. That'll become much do more important later on. Boom, boom. Do not they will break against our resolve. Excellent, excellent. 
Usually if I had an archer, I'd actually be starting these fights out with my archer, but we don't have that functionality right now, so we're just gonna run on up and handle business. Why not? The Hippogriff is just running up instead of charging, but I think it's because it doesn't have uh, uh, enough room to charge right now. So, my hope is that when we get back into more open space, it'll charge the way it's supposed to. You save the last fact, one that, for me. I felt like that was enough space to charge, to be honest with you. Oh, damn! You got obliterated. And hey, look at that skin. Let's see it. All right. We're going to meet the second permanent member of our squad, Wendewog. Speaking of which, my squad, uh, that at least I'm planning for, is uh, myself, Sela, Wendewog, Nanio, Regil, and no, Darren. No, I can't just walk away. It's got to be here somewhere. You struggle to make out the man's features in the gloom. As soon as he steps into the circle of light, however, you realize that you have never encountered a creature like this before. The stranger looks like the work of a vivisectionist who attempted to stitch together a lizard and a man. When do I? Lan, did you find it? Who is that? The do-gooders here to save our mongrel souls, no doubt. Wait. They might know what's going on up there. Demons are laying waste to Kenebris. If things are as bad as you say, then we all have to hurry. You didn't come from the direction of the shield maze. Damn it. I couldn't care less about what's happening on the surface, but the maze. I realize that you guys have your own troubles, but we need to be in Kenebris. People are dying up there. Please, show us the way out. Who are you? Tieflings? Tieflings are the descendants of people who sullied themselves by mating with demons. Our ancestors would never sink that low. We are the underground crusaders, the children of the crusade's finest. Sadly, underground crusaders is a bit of a mouthful, <laughs> so people usually just call us mongrels. <laughs> You just love repeating that, don't you, Lan? Mongrels. That's what the Uplanders call us. But we call ourselves Neethers. No matter what you call us, it's not gonna stop our horns, hooves, or tails from growing. I've never heard of underground crusaders before. In Canabras, they're called mongrels. People say that they come up to the surface at night and eat anyone foolish enough to wander alone after midnight. <laughs> To tell you the truth, I thought you guys were just a tale to tell kids at night. <laughs> That's human gratitude for you. Our forefathers suffered the consequences of demonic corruption, all to protect Mendev and Golarion. And for what? So we could become monsters used to frighten children. <sighs> Every mongrel has their own take on it. Our chief, for example, thinks of us as something like a reserve military force. He thinks we're standing by until the moment we're needed, and when we emerge on the surface and save the day, all the people will see how good we are and they'll love us for it. Yeah, he leaves that last part out when he talks about it, of course, but it's easy enough to read between the lines. What is this place? This is the hall where we remember the glory of our forebears. Sorry about the mess. Uh, it doesn't usually look like this, trust me. Sometimes we even wipe the dust off the exhibits. <laughs> this is where the relics of the first crusaders are displayed. Our lives are short. Our glories are quickly forgotten. But this place helps us to remember that we are just as worthy as anyone else. And that our lives are not lived in vain. Oh, the first crusaders? You've been down here that long? That's crazy. What are you doing here? That's none of your bit. We're looking for a holy sword. It was here, in the center, sticking out of a rock. The sooner we find it, the better. Some kids from our tribe took off for the shield maze. 
They figured it had collapsed, and now it's their time to go up to the surface, like all the legends foretold. Except they don't have a clue what's waiting for them up there. They're not fighters. And Sul, the chief of our tribe, is dead set against it. He says that now isn't the time for the underground crusaders to take up arms. If we get the Holy Sword, we might be able to change the chief's mind. It's a fool's errand. None of us will be able to hold the sword, let alone use it to save anyone. It's not an ordinary weapon. It's made from righteous heavenly flame, and will burn anyone who touches it. Do you think you're special, Lan? I'll pick it up with my teeth and tie it to my hand if I have to. <laughs> it doesn't matter. An angel's sword and a troop of stalwart mongrels will be able to work a minor miracle. <laughs> uh, speaking of which, you're still here, Wendu, which means that deep down, you know it's possible. Windwalk shrugs and turns away. Maze, does it really lead to the surface? Yes. There are other ways up, but they are far from here. And after the earthquakes, there's a good chance they've collapsed. But the maze... There's a legend among our people that when the walls of the maze fall, that will be a signal for us, the underground crusaders. The time has come to go up to the surface and fight the demons in the final confrontation. <laughs> Until then, the people say the maze is shielding us from taking rash actions. I'm the only one in our whole tribe to have been in the maze. And even I don't know if it's true. But the further I went in the maze, the fresher the air became. That means that it really must lead to the surface. When the ceiling and walls started shaking, the young ones in our tribe lost their heads. They figured the maze was going to collapse, so it was time to go up to the surface. They grabbed whatever weapons were on hand and ran off toward the maze. They think the maze is no longer a danger to them. They've been listening to Wendwog too much. Don't try to blame this on me. Yes, I told them that our people are capable of making our way through the maze. In the future. But I always told them to wait until I had made a map of all the maze's dangers. I warned them a hundred times. But it was no use. My words just went in one ear and out the other. A sword of holy flame? How did it wind up down here? It came here with its owner. A long time ago. 50,000 gongs, to be precise. 70 years ago, in Uplander time. 50,000 gongs ago, <laughs> our forebears found a dead angel here, along with the bodies of his comrades. The tribe gave them a dignified burial, and they were laid to rest with their weapons. But the flaming angelic sword was stuck in a rock, and no one was able to pull it out. It burned to the touch, like real fire. So the rock was placed over the angel's grave. It should be here somewhere. Maybe the angel will dig himself out and find the sword for us. That might be our best shot in this chaos. Lan, watch your tongue. We'll find the sword faster if we work together. I'll help you. Thanks. An extra pair of eyes can only help. The sword will be easy enough to spot. It looks, uh, swordy. Help us, and in return, we'll get you out of here. <laughs> now we're talking. Let's get to work. It's a good thing we all bumped into each other, isn't it? What? You want to find the sword quickly, so the underground monsters bring you back to the surface. So be it. So you probably noticed I didn't take the evil option to just kill all the people here. <laughs> I definitely feel like it's more appropriate I to do roleplay. I believe this is possible. Oh, come on. Statue of an unknown knight. The technique is crude, but the figure was clearly crafted with genuine feeling. Pretty sure it's a statue of a uh, first crusader. Um, I want to role play this as uh, the type of evil where he does what benefits him, not just mindlessly killing people. 
The room looks like an improvised museum or perhaps some kind of temple. I also like the idea of uh, Regil and Isaac taking over the taking over the crusade and making it a fine-tuned machine where it actually works better and more people are being saved than uh, ever something. were before they got involved. So we won't just be murder hobo mindlessly ripping people apart for sure. All right, let's see our first Mythic Path content in the game. so pretty a strange flash pierces the gloom and Isaac feels drops of searing blood run down his chest the wound healed by Terendalev reopens and weeps scarlet but there is no pain or weakness a hazy scene appears a cave chamber this one or another one entirely Isaac's heartbeat quickens and a stream of thoughts suddenly bursts into his mind thoughts that clearly belong to another treachery they betrayed me, trapped me, and stabbed me in the back. My trusted allies, my treasured friends, the people I swore to protect, the people from whom I descended from heaven and came to this turbulent mortal world. There they are, up ahead, in the gloom of the cave. What are they waiting for? Are they afraid to draw any closer? Do they believe I'm about to die from their traitorous blows? Next to me, a quiet moan. A girl with a golden braid lies on the rocks, clutching her slashed side. She refused to join with the traitors and paid dearly for it. I could have tried to run, but I will not. Whilst I have the strength, I must. While recognizing the foreign origin of these thoughts, Isaac intuits that he could control them somehow. Let's try to furiously call out the traitors. The voice, trembling with pain and rage, carries to the farthest reaches of the cave, sealing in this strange vision. Why? Why did you betray me and your comrades? Why did the servants of the abyss tempt you with? Blurred shapes, the faces of several immortals bleed into existence. One of them, a young half-elf with his hair twisted into a knot, responds to the accusations. You and your goddess have given us nothing, Lario. Nothing! But Lord Descari will give us everything. And there's no power in the world that will stop his advance. The frenzy of foreign thoughts comes faster and faster, like a rushing river, and images flash by, one after another. A priestess in colorful robes observing the stars, a young female paladin praying, clutching her glowing sword, a majestic golden-winged angel gazing into the distance, his face covered by a helmet, but his voice ringing clear. Only if you're willing, and only if you're ready. There is no going back. There, in the vision, the darkness in the cave stirs into motion. Something massive appears from within its depths. A vague shadow, an outline, a nightmare come to light. A wave of odious chirping and rustling emanates from the shadow. The sound piercing like high irons, lancing through flesh and bone. The traitors fall to their knees before the shadow in reverent ecstasy. And the wounded girl thrashes in her death throes. The yawning chest wound burns white hot. Isaac's head pounds with pain, and it is no longer clear whose pain it is. The person called Lariel who sent this vision, or the one unlucky enough to receive it, will. But Isaac is determined to fight off the illusion. Who failed? The force of this terrifying attack, though originating in a vision, is much greater than anything Isaac can withstand. Crippling fatigue drags him to the ground, hand trembling, cold piercing his skull and slowly creeping along his spine. The one who sent the vision is experiencing something similar. He is broken and exhausted. A monstrous shadow emerges from the murk of the cave. It is not real. It exists only in this strange vision or memory, but the thrill of fear it provokes is more than real. The shadow's features starkly resemble those of Descari, the terrifying demon lord. In a movement as swift as thought itself, the monster's hand is wrapped around the throat of the one they called Lario. <clears throat> the foolish angel struggling on the rocks like a fly with his wings torn off, intones the shadow. Its voice changes as it moves, shifting from a quiet whispering to a sonorous shout, becoming young, then old, and quavering. 
Where is your goddess angel? Where is the self-assured hero? How is it that you're dying here all alone, so far from the light of your heaven? A strange calm envelops the thoughts of the one called Lario. He recognizes who stands before him and he knows he will never bow down before this enemy. The flaming sword flares to life in his hand, bright, pure, flickering with multicolored sparks like a sunbeam through stained glass. Slash! The blade slices through the demonic creature's flesh and the monster recoils with a howl, releasing his grip on Lirio's throat. The angel falls back heavily on the rocks. His vitality is ebbing, but his pride remains undiminished. He grips the sword, and with his last burst of strength, plunges it into the rock. Isaac senses that the vision is fading, the rush of thoughts diminishing like a river running dry. The last thing he hears is this. You will kill me, monster. This I know. But one day, someone will come here and raise up my sword. They will raise it up and punish evildoers and traitors. The vision disappears, vanishing in a burst of colors. Isaac does not hear the final words, but he seems to complete the thought, taking it to heart. The words fly from his lips, and with them, something else. The heat blazing in Isaac's chest fades away. The edges of the scarlet wound close, leaving not even a scar behind. Looking down, Isaac sees the flaming sword in his hand, or rather, its outline, the memory of what the sword looked like. With a final surge of warm and soothing light, the sword vanishes and the light is drawn into his hand. Isaac senses that it will return. All he need do is call it. Hey, are you all right? You were kind of glowing just now. Sila kneels before the light, offering up a prayer to Iomade. That, that was it. The light of heaven, but how? What did you do with it? Where did it go? You saw it too? The traitors, the dying girl. It's only us here. Your group, you, me, Windu, and the light of heaven that sort of got, uh, sucked into you? Any chance you can whip it out again? We do kind of need it. Sorry, I crack jokes when I get nervous. And when I'm upset. And when I'm happy. A anyway, what I said, it came out wrong. We need to bring you to Chief Sum. You can show everyone the light of heaven, we'll rally the tribe and go into the maze and we'll get back our kin. And what if he can't make it happen a second time? What then? The tribe will just say we're crazy and turn its back on us. I think I saw the memories of Lariel, the angel who died here. Lariel? That really was Lariel? The angel from the legends. The ancestors even got his name right on the gravestone. The chief will be thrilled. You. Thousands of gongs, and no one's been able to touch it. And now you, an ordinary creature of flesh and blood no different to us, get the sword and start talking about visions. Now, now, Wentuag, don't be a sore loser. He is clearly different from us. The sword appeared before him, along with the angel's name and all that other stuff, because he doesn't carry our mongrel taint. Heaven doesn't give a damn how special we are. We're born with evil inside us. Heaven doesn't need to know any more than that. I know you're willing to tear anyone apart to uphold our people's honor, but... You and Sul, you just refuse to face the truth. We are the way we are because our ancestors' bodies were corrupted by the Abyss. It does the same thing to plants and animals. There's nothing heroic or special about it. It doesn't make us better, and it doesn't make us worthier. Requires angel mythic path. Reveal the light of heaven. It seems I can control it. That is just... Wow, I mean, that's amazing! Heaven has truly blessed you. This power is the most majestic thing I've ever seen in all my life. Is this what the sun is like, Lan? Yes, it's similar. 
But this light is more... golden? Chief Sol needs to see this. Now that we have the power of angels on our side, he can't say no. He'll have to assemble a troop to storm the maze. You Uplanders care about your kids, right? Help us save ours. Without them, we won't survive. And then... the perils of the maze won't be so bad if we go together. We'll make our way through it and find the way to Canabras. Lead us to your chief, and I'll decide if I'm going to help you or not. Let's go. We'll take the short route. Well, the only route, really. <laughs> I think the game does a fantastic job of making it clear how special your mythic path is and how it makes you more powerful than everybody else around you. And they do that uh, right from the start. And that I think that sequence is a um, is a great example of that, right? The way they're so transfixed about everything that they're seeing and they're like, wow, this is something you could do. We've never been able to do this even though we've tried. Even before you get access to some of the other um, uh, paths, it becomes clear you're capable of great things, but in a way that feels very, um, you need me. very natural. Good. You know, like a natural part of what you're experiencing in the story. Really cool stuff. And if she needs Always that, that means you worst. need that as well. There we go. Let's remove that. You're not going to be here for long, but still, me? no need to uh, you make you feel less damage than you're supposed to during that time. There we go. One down. And Miller, you're just getting hit up this go around, huh? There we go. Not too bad. No reason to pause. There's, oh, this, oh, speed. For some reason, this little part right here is always annoying. Let's see how it goes this time. Thanks, Lan. We'll, You're so awesome, Lan. Griffin will make it a little bit better. We'll see. There we go. These guys down here. Oh, oh I can't stand them. My obedience. Save the last one for me. Yep. There we go. All right, one's down. I appreciate that for sure. There we go. Very nice. Very, very nice. I found. Ooh, there we go. Wand to cure light wounds. That'll definitely come in handy. Wait, loot. We're good, right? Yep. Okay. Thanks, Lan. You're so awesome, Lan. We march right ahead. There. I know there's something up here. And of course, blood. right when I'm like, stop being so squeamish, is right when uh, <laughs> they decide to go ahead and show up and spitting acid everywhere. Come on, man. Uh, if I remember correctly, yeah, they kind of, they kind of ambush you here, on. right? Yeah, I'm kind of just Get barely remembering it. There we go. It's coming back to me. Is that one already dead? Yeah, the other one's already dead. Excellent. Unfortunately, this is where the voice acting ends. Wendewall glances at Lan, who is fixing his slit bowstring, and quickly walks over to you. Her cat-like eyes glow from beneath her hood. Listen here, you. I don't know who you are, where you come from, but you and I are the only two people here who see things clearly. That's why I'm asking you, don't show the light of heaven to Saul. Lan is sure that the land should be shown, that the light should be shown to the mongrels. Land. Wendewalk grimaces and a guttural, husky snarl unfurls in her throat. He wants to play the hero. His first idea, if you remember, was to grab the sword and run headlong into the maze. Does that sound like a plan to you? To me, it sounds like suicide. The worst part is that the tribe might actually take his words to heart and follow where he leads. I thought you considered the mongrels to be great warriors. 
the descendants of great warriors. I believe that my people are worthy of greatness, that we are strong and can do many things. That's why we were chased down here. We scared people. But it's one thing to go hunting in the caves and another to fight in the shield maze. When Dual leans closer, her pupils dilating. I've been there. I spent my whole life training so I could make it through all the way to the end. There were more of us trackers at the start. We were young and stupid. Hey, I'm sorry if you uh hear loud explosions outside my uh, door. Obviously, July 4th is coming up soon. And out in my neighborhood, they're already getting things cracking. <laughs> What's a couple of monsters when there's a whole world out there waiting for us? That's what we thought, but we weren't prepared. The maze isn't just a physical challenge. It's cunning and full of traps. It's dark as a primordial night. And if you close your eyes and listen, you hear whispers right behind you and soft singing in the distance that seems to rise and fall with the beating of your heart. When Duog looks away, I had to learn from my friends' mistakes. I had to step over their bodies and go further. I don't want to have to do that again. And it will happen again if a crowd of ill-prepared fighters burst into the maze with no idea where they're going, all because Lan believes that a glowing sword will solve all our problems. Don't you want to save the kids lost in the maze? I do want to, but I'm not going to risk the future of the tribe for the sake of a few stupid kids. Chief Saul is hesitated for good reason. He also understands how dangerous this is for the tribe. Land's the only one who benefits from these childish games of heroism. I'll go alone if I have to and find them, or whatever's left of them, without any heroics, relying only on myself, risking only my own life. Windwalk slows. You and your friends. You could come with me. Perhaps we can make it to the end of the maze together and find the way out to the surface. I'll think about it. Let's go. Windowog nods. Don't show the chief the light, and I'll lead you through the maze to the surface. I swear it. So Isaac's already decided that he's going to side with her because he likes the idea of he's going to take all of the risk. He doesn't want any young mongrels ending up massacred because he led them into a situation that they really could not handle. So Windowog's plan of, look, let's just go in there slow and steady with a plan together with experienced people instead of trying to have a bunch of mongrels just charge into a place to their deaths. That appeals to him significantly more. It seems like the more righteous thing to do. And because of that, he's going to go along with it. Your first impression of the mongrel village is of a squalid dump with the odors to match. Unblinking, glowing eyes watch you from the gloom, and deformed shadows slope between the huts. You see some mongrels gutting white eyes, gutting white eyeless fish while others are repairing fish nets. All the signs of normal village life, but tense expectation hangs in the air. I have these said, A's mongrel slowly shuffles his way toward you. The hair on his head grows in length, wispy strands and his face has a distinctly rat-like appearance with pronounced teeth, and you hear a rattling sound in his chest with every breath he takes. One of his eyes is white, fully scarred by cataracts, while the other gleams with moisture. Uplanders, eh? End times are upon us, indeed. Chief Saul, we found the angel's sword, and we found the one who can wield it. Land points at you. He had a vision, and now the angel's sword, together with the light of heaven, are somehow inside him? Gather the tribe. Anyone who can hold a weapon. The young ones are still alive. We can go save them. Saul raises his hand with ragged, broken fingernails. Ah, Len, always dreaming, always talking. You're too hasty, too hasty for your own good. It's going to get you in trouble. Saul eyes you up and down. Uplander with the light of heaven. That's too good for us. Our kind don't have good things happen. There's always a catch. Len, Trust people because he likes to believe. It's not right, Len. I'm the chief. I don't work on things. Show the light. Windwalk stares at you intently, like a cat watching a bird, and shakes her head in warning. Is there someone else from the surface here? So points south to the side. There he is, hale and hearty and prim as a peacock, just like me. So laughs, but quickly returns to business. It's not good. Too many uplanders. Not good. It's not right. What are you up to here? You're not one of us. We're not your kind. When the kind comes, we'll come to you. Not you to us. 
I will help you find the lost mongrels in the maze, but you can quit hoping for a magical sword to appear. Windowalk lets out a satisfied laugh. At last, someone talking sense. Uh, you don't understand. It's holy light. It will scare off the monsters that dwell in the maze. Land drops his voice. Listen, I don't personally believe in this angelic light, but Saul does. Show him. It won't cost you anything. This seals it even more for Isaac, because Land is now telling these people lies, things he knows not to be true, but is trying to just force them into the situation when, again, it could result in their deaths. So even though we are lawful, and even though he um, considers himself an upright individual, unfortunately, the game only allows me to be chaotic and lie, and I feel like that's closer to the way Isaac is right now than the lawful option of, hey, everybody, come follow me, regardless of the fact that I have no idea what I'm doing. Chaotic. Lan is mistaken. We didn't find the sword. Lan whips around to look at you, stunned. He clenches his fist for a moment, as if planning to shake the truth out of you, but he quickly gets a handle on himself. I, I don't know why you're lying. No doubt you have your reasons, but I know it's a lie, and you know it, and Windu knows it. Land turns to Windwalk. Tell him, Windu. Windwalk stares blankly back at him. I saw the light shining between the rocks, and then it went out. Land saw what he wanted to see. Why are you doing this? Doing what? Telling the truth? I don't want the blood of gullible mongrels on my hands. Land shakes his head in despair. So now, instead, we'll both have the blood of young mongrels on our hands. Kids waiting for help that'll never come. Everybody around me said that they didn't want to go anywhere or save anyone, but I didn't believe them. I always have to take things further than anybody else. Isn't that right, Chief? Fine. I see how things are. I don't need any more convincing. Land offers a crooked smile. Please, Land. Miracles are not meant for us. We, the pride, wait. If you're one of us, you will wait. We're not going anywhere. I'm planning to rest now. There's a hut over there. You can rest there. Lan is silent, his eyes shifting from you and Saul to Windowog. You made the right choice. It was the lesser of two evils. And now, rest, so we can be at our best when we go into the maze. I promise to lead you to the surface, and I will. Excellent. All right, we got level ups, but you know what? Press is going to talk to him. So he's himself around to face you. Eh? I want to ask a few questions. Saul nods. Hey, tell me about the mongrels. Eh? Uh, well, we're the crusaders under the ground. The children are the first crusaders. The world wound touches everyone. Look at us. We are all marked by it. The uplanders didn't like it. They drove us down here. But we have a secret. Saul's one good eye twinkles slightly. We're waiting. When the soil maze falls, that is the end of our lives down here. We will go to the surface to fight. Until then, we don't. Our place is here. Tell me about Windowalk. Ah, Windowalk, a beauty, a huntress. Who is more skilled than Windowalk? There are braver fighters, yes, but brave doesn't mean skilled. Windowalk is the only one to go into the maze and come out again. The others listen to everything she has to say. Tell me about Land. Land? Saul makes a vague gesture. He's not one of us. No, not one of us. His father was one of us, but his mother? No. They took him up to the surface. They ruined him as a child. Then they come back, but he wasn't one of us. A good hunter, yes, but he feels trapped down here. But he can't go up there either. It's not safe. He would last a gong. Thank you for your answers. Saul shrugs. It's no matter. What are you going to do now? Live as we did before. The ones who went, their trouble is their own. We will mourn them, but we are neither. We wait for the call. Has Mays fallen? No. So we wait. Can I just clarify? Are we uplanders, prisons, prisoners, or guests here? Have you drawn weapons against us? No. Have you killed us? No. Have you stolen our food? No. Guest. I'm going to enter the maze with Windwalk. Saul looks at you, clearly preparing to say some harsh words, but in the end he just waves you off. I'd forbid it, but what would be the point? It's Windwalk. 
She'll ignore me and do it anyway. I spoiled her. No point wringing my hands over it now. I want to look around here. All right. Really, really cool stuff. I like this introduction to, uh, you know, what what uh, what portion of mongrel culture you get to see. I think it really establishes them as <laughs> kind of creepy, to be honest with you. Definitely isolated. Um, at some point, Wildcat did an update where they did a much better job of making them actually look like mutants. And I think it's just very, very effective all the way around. All right, let's say, is that Sila saw walking around? Uh-oh, was Together, she not mounted? She was not mounted, girl. You know, get up on that horse. Or maybe it just, oh, it's just the area that we're in. It's not allowing her to mount. That's what it is. All right, um, you. I think your stuff is automatic, so I don't have to look at anything to know what to do. Yep, yep, just pick that. Yep, we're good. You, I don't know what uh, level two of SBC looks like. I never had to look at it, so what's the deal? Oh, um, I definitely want you to focus on two-handed. Power attack doesn't technically do anything for you yet, but you know what? We'll take it. We'll take it. Anyway. That's fine. Uh, you, sure. Well, I guess we'll go ahead and stick with this. No problem. Oh, you get a hex. Ooh, let's take Evil Eye. Make some of them hard-hit enemies a little bit easier to deal with. Sure. Uh, why am I worrying about you? Your stuff is irrelevant. You're not going to be sticking around. In fact, let's go ahead and make sure we take all your stuff off before you leave and then yeah, finally when do uh wendy 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 let's get you set up one moment please i need to pull up her build so i know what to do with her and now let's see this bill when do uh okay so when do walk she gets 28 points at level up because she's again a party member so they get a little bit more points so submit that excellent and we're going to make her into a shifter i have never played with a shifter before so this should be very interesting more specifically she's going to be a child of manticore now her stats let's look she's going to have a 20 on strength she's going to dump charisma she's going to have a 19 on dexterity very very nice she'll keep constitution at 10 she'll bring intelligence up to 12 and that's that for her uh, skills. We're going to make her mobility, trickery, stealth. She's going to be my main trickery specialist. Hopefully that works out. Obviously, she doesn't have trickery as a class skill. So that's why I'm also having my main character level up trickery. I'm hoping between the two of them, any lockpick we come across, at least one of them is going to be able to open. Hopefully, again, that works out. We'll see. Uh, and then let's see. Oh my god. Actually, that's not the way this works. Hold on. I've screwed this up I do want to play shifter, but we got to go in another direction first uh, First level I need a, an extra feat. So I'm gonna go into fighter We're not gonna go all the way to make this a really great option Of course with mutation warrior you really want to get mutagen But I felt like when do all taking the uh, rank in mutation warrior seemed very very appropriate She's still going to have the same ability points. She's still going to have mobility and trickery. Um, it's not letting me move. Oh, I got two extra points that I can work with. Cool. Oh, not persuasion. She doesn't care about persuasion. Perception. There we go. Now, I get two feats to work with. I want point blank shot. And obviously, I want precise shot as well. Absolutely a must have for any ranged character. Now that we've done that, from here on out, we will be a shifter. More specifically, child of the manticore really really excited to see how this works out give her those three skill points and then she's good now we're gonna take this out we don't need this we're gonna put this back here make sure it's on at all time we'll put this over here we'll turn this on at all time these are her spikes so she literally throws spikes from her body so speaking of which she does not need anything on in her hands but actually we'll go ahead and put this on because there will come a time in the game where we have to use uh, arrows for something. And I want to make sure everybody has the capability to do that when the time comes. You can take this stuff off. And didn't I pick up? Yes, I did pick up a two-handed weapon. So we'll go ahead and put that in your hands. And then you. You've been using your fist this whole time? I forgot to... Ooh! I forgot to give this man a damn blade! Good lord. That's not cool. Um... 
let's see. Oh, you know what? The uh, Griffin is going to need to level up as well. We'll give the Griffin is basically our main tank. So we'll give him the Gracers and we'll give him that. Even though, yeah, I think, I think Kabili is basically the same thing. Wait, this is, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's basically the uh, the same. But long term, the, he's our tank. So we'll work with that. Um, We can sell pretty much the rest of this, I believe. You got everything that you need. Hold on, let me check her hot bar again. Oh, yeah, we'll put this all the way over here. So these allow her to throw spikes. They get steadily better as she levels up. And then the magical aspect allows her to go into a form where she's going to get an inherent bonus to strength the dexterity. And then when she gets around, I think, level 7 or 8, she gets like a real shift of form where she can uh, just go absolutely bonkers. But that's later on down the line. All right, you've got everything you need. What about Rely you? Um, we're going to turn off that for now. You probably don't have the attack bonus necessary to really make use of it. We do not want to charge with you. In fact, if anything, we will always be charging with you. Okay, got that turned on. Uh, you, is your stand. stuff set up? It's not. We don't need that. We don't need that. Doubtful we would use that. Possible we would use. Uh, we'll definitely use the shroud sometimes. And we'll put all of this here. And charge. Even though he's exhausted, you can't use it right now. That's fine. What's you, on your mind? let's get your bar you straightened out mind? as well. Put charge here. You've got that. Um, oh, yeah. Evil Eye, we definitely want. In fact, I'll put Evil Eye here. Something we'll use in regular. Heels go um, over in this side. Buffs go here. Um, actually, no. I'll put my buffs here, there there and you don't have any other spells or want to worry about right now right okay that is all good and let me check my inventory one more time just to make sure is there anything else padded armor no that doesn't really give me anything i want she's probably the one who would use the wand what is this potion of feather step not particularly useful at this time i don't think at least and yeah i think everything else there we can go ahead and sell you get another slot we'll go ahead and put a healing in there i know we're gonna need plenty plenty healing um i don't remember fear being a big issue bless is nice we could put shield of faith on the um on the pet to give us some more ac so that makes sense um and I feel like, you know, no, I'm going to take another Shield of Faith. Because I feel like he's not really quite the man yet where I want him to be running in, handling business, and focusing on that. So we won't take a spell that's really meant for more so for him. And that's it. Excellent. Okay. Let's move forward. Uh-oh. Oh, human face at last. And here I thought I'd be gazing upon the twisted visages of these troglodytes for the rest of my life. An elderly man in expensive but not ostentatious clothes approaches you. His face is peppered with several healed cuts and bruises and twisted in an expression of extreme discontent. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Horgus Worm. Yes, that worm. You've no doubt heard of me if you spend any time at all in the city. I have a business proposition for you. Your name tells me nothing. Who are you? You truly are freshly arrived in the city then. You couldn't have picked a worse time, that's for certain. Only just arrived and the city's been raised to rubble. You should know that you are looking at one of the richest and most distinguished men in Kenebris. I may not be as well known as certain swaggering loudmouths who spend their time, their lives trapezing from one ball to the next, but the Worm Trading Company is one of the pillars of the city. I'll have you know. Did you see the marquees in the square? I paid for those. Tried any festival delicacies? You have Horgus Worm to thank for that. How did you end up here? For a moment, Horgus' eyes focus on Camellia before his gaze returns to you. Like everyone else, down I went when the accursed beetle cleaved the ground in twain beneath our feet. <laughs> he called this guy an accursed beetle. <laughs> That's hilarious. I'm lucky I didn't break my neck in the fall. And I'm doubly lucky that I didn't encounter any subterranean cockroaches on my blind wanderings and instead came across hunters from this settlement. Although I must say that when I first glimpsed their physiognomies, my life flashed before my very eyes. But they turned out to be decent chaps, frightening to look at, 
but able to keep a bargain. This is still, in my 39 years of living, the only time I've ever seen physiognomies used in a sentence. You don't speak very kindly of the mongrels, even though they saved your life. Ha! <laughs> kind words are for people with hours to fritter away on pleasantries. Horgus Worm speaks his mind, and he pays for services rendered, not with kind words, but with hard coin. I gave the mongrels my dagger in exchange for their help. Its handle is worth more than their whole village. What kind of business proposition? I don't know what is happening on the surface right now, but I am determined to find out. You have no intention of seeking out the rest of your days in this village, I suspect. We must find a route back to the surface, to the city, if there's anything left of it. I am a moderately pious man, and I don't mind relying on the help of a person who has the favor of the gods, especially with so many demons lurking about. You are strong. It will be no trouble to you. But I, alas, am not as fit as I once was. I can't go crawling about through caves, plying at scouts. My proposition is simple. Lead me back to the city, and I shall pay you a thousand gold coins. I suggest we help this man. It is good to have friends among the Kenneris elite. So Isaac plans to make his way out the city anyway, so helping is not a big deal, but he certainly doesn't like the manner which Horcus Worm speaks of the mongrels, so he's going to put him over the coals. Diplomacy. 2,000 gold. Ah! Oh! oh, you know what? Yeah, this is the uh, result of not having Sela with higher charisma, which is kind of what I was counting on. Yeah, definitely need to get her to pilot in ASAP. Why not 10,000 or 100? No, let's not be miserly. Let's say a million. My initial offer was a king's ransom. You've likely never seen so much gold in all your life. It's non-negotiable. I said a thousand. That's my final offer. Money first. I would gladly pay in advance, but all my wealth is up on the surface. Fear not. The word of a worm is worth more than platinum. Ask anyone. Horgus worm has never reneged on a deal. Deal. Splendid. In the meantime, I shall sit here in the village. We have to go. Go on, go on. Don't forget our agreement. When you find the way out, be sure to tell me. Awesome. All right. Mongo camp. Let's go ahead and search around a little bit before we rest and move on. Pretty sure there's a vendor somewhere around here so we can sell all of our stuff. And I think she's got some uh, scrolls and whatnot that might be useful. You know, I've never been good at this section. I, I, I feel like, I always feel like when I'm looking at her list, there's something I should probably be getting from her. But a lot of times I just end up moving on. What's the problem? Let's go. This tragedy may not have happened. If you spend less time surveilling honest citizens and more time tracking the real spies and demon worshippers. Brilliant idea. How come I didn't think of it? Now, if only the cultists would tell us they were cultists, then we wouldn't have to waste time investigating honest citizens who decide to go all cloak and dagger right under our noses. Horgus and Anivia sit some distance apart, sniping at one another in an idle fashion that testifies to their long acquaintance and mutual dislike. When they notice you, they quickly fall silent. Anivia, how's the leg? Anivia scrunches up her nose. Well, it hasn't fallen off yet, so that's good. They bandaged me up all nice and smeared some stinking stuff on the wound, so it looks like I'm going to live. They said wait a day and I'll be right as rain, so I'm waiting. What's the bad blood between you two about? It's an old matter. Mrs. Terabate here had the notion of spying on me, then of rummaging through my goods. I ask you, do I look like a cultist? Hmm. <clears throat> cultists don't tend to look like cultists, you know? That's kind of the whole problem. And you, Mr. Gworm, built a whole secret operation of buying and smuggling into the city. Uh, what was it? Oh, yeah, magical weapons. How was I supposed to know that all the rigmarole with middlemen was so you could anonymously donate supplies to the crusade? Don't you see? I have a reputation to uphold, one that I value most highly. Horgus Worm is a hard-nosed businessman, not a good fairy from a tale. Yes, I care about my city. Yes, I wish to see that its defenders, my defenders, were well-fed, healthy, and well-armed. 
but to make those donations openly was unthinkable. I might as well hang a sign outside my door, welcoming in every sponge or leech and parasite in the city. I appreciate your help for the crusade. No jokes. You're an all right bloke. But carrying on secret dealings in a city that's teeming with cultists is a huge pain in the backside for us lot whose job it is to keep an eye on that sort of thing. What do you think is happening in the city now? Perhaps the city is no more. If Discari himself appeared, there's no telling how bad things are. Can you hold off on writing our obituaries just yet? The city's full of fighters, and besides that, it's barely a stone's throw from Nerusian. I think our people will hold on long enough for reinforcements to come from the Queen. This ain't Daskari's home turf. He's gonna have to retreat, or else fight off the whole Mendevian army. What do you think of the mongrels? I thought they were just a story, the sort of thing drunks in the tavern would come out with. Now I discover that it's true. Well, what can I possibly think of them? The poor creatures are most unfortunate, with their faces and their minds so deformed. It's a miracle they're even alive. The part that boggles my mind is that they're des the descendants of the First Crusaders. All these years they've been living beneath our feet, in caves, in the dirt. If I'd known the legends about them were true, I'd have dedicated my life to getting them out of this place. To what end? The people of Kenebris would have stoned them on sight, and Prelay Horon would have had them tossed on the pyre in mass. Whatever the ills of this place, it is their home. How long do you think they would have survived on the surface? What are you going to do when you get back to the surface? I'm going to go home. Last I knew, I owned a very fine mansion. I shall see if it's still standing, or if I am now homeless. I'm going to find Erebeth. She's my wife and the leader of the Eagle Watch. As long as she lives, she won't allow Kenebrez to fall. We have to go. Go on then, and don't dilly-dally. The sooner we get out of here, the likelier we are to find some people still alive up there. Take care of yourself. <laughs> All right. Uh, yep, here we go. She's the vendor, but let's look around first. Pick up any trash we can find and make sure we sell everything to her we possibly want to give. What's that? There we go. Okay. We march ahead. Let's check the inventory one more time. There's nothing I want, right? Doesn't look like it. Looks like we're all good. You there! A tall woman with a face deformed by an enormous swelling smiles broadly at you, showing off her double row of small, sharp teeth. You, from the surface! You must be tough to make it all the way here. Never thought I'd see the day. Call me Dyra. Let's trade. Who are you? The people around here call me all sorts. Dyra the hoarder. Dyra the coin. Dyra the city girl. Like that's a bad thing. Ha <laughs> ha! I trawl the caves picking up all kinds of things from the surface that wash down here through your sewers. I trade all kinds of junk for food and clothes. But I only part what I best finds for coins. Got no coins? Forgot what money is? Well, then I have no use for you. If you want city goods, you need to pay for them with gold. Like city folk. Why are you so eager to trade with me? Because all of the people here are no better than animals now. Dyra yells with surprising anger before being overcome with coughing. Wiping her mouth, she continues. Our forefathers lived in the city. Like you. Our people love to reminisce about armies, knights, crusades, but I couldn't care less about that. Savages with clubs can fight a war. Only civilized folk can buy and sell. They've all forgotten what trading is. They've forgotten the value of gold. They bought our hides for plant roots and go on about the feats of the crusaders. Who cares about them? I don't need help remembering. I have coins and I have things to sell. Now let's trade like proper city folk. <laughs> let's trade. <laughs> I wonder if you get special dialogue with her um, if Abadar is your deity. Seems like that would be rather appropriate. Uh, yeah, I don't need that. Pretty sure. Yeah, I don't need that either. Don't need this. Don't need that. Don't need that. Don't need that. Don't need that. Oh, you got to do this right. Other non-magical. There you go. Get that up out of there. All right, looking at her stuff. 
Oh, she's got a cold iron masterwork great ask. Great axe. Wow. Um, scroll of heroism. Yeah, we don't have a glaive down here anyway. Uh, we got a quiver of cold iron ammunition. It's known for its effectiveness against demons and fey creatures. It is forged. This only works if you're using arrows, right? It probably doesn't work with her spikes. You know what? I'm going to just buy some anyway and see. But most likely it doesn't work. Um, scroll of blur. We should probably have like one of these on deck. I'm thinking. Oh, oh, there's a scroll of grease too, but I don't think. Oh, you know what? Here's another problem. I don't think we have anyone who can actually use those scrolls. Right? Scroll of blur and scroll of grease are not available to anybody here. We could get a scroll of it. Looked like sleep. Yeah, sleep was available, but no, nah, I'm straight. So. I think we'll just leave it like this and keep it moving because I'm pretty sure the game gives you plenty of healing posters. I don't need those. Oh, there's mage armor. Mage armor would actually be good for my... Oh, and you know what? Mage armor lasts for one hour per level. Can you get the... Can the uh, pet drink a potion? Does that work? You know what? I'm going to try. Uh, I don't want... You know what? No, I will take two. Screw it. Whatever. Uh, this is not going to be the end all be yell for us. Why does it say meaning? Okay, it's just meaning for her. Awesome. All right. Thank you, Dyer. And now. Mongrel rest. It's time. We're heading out now. Land won't get in our way. When Dog breathes in deeply through our nose, her eyes narrowing in concentration, like she's trying to taste the air to detect even the faintest sense. Finally, she gives an approving nod. It's time to what? To get you out of here. I'm keeping my word. When Dog looks around, it's quiet now. The village has settled down. I know the shortest route to the maze. We'll take a boat. No one will see us. Are we still going to save the missing mongrels? When Dog frowns, what? Oh, uh, them. They're probably dead already, but if we meet anyone on the way, we won't just walk on by. At the end of the day, they are of the tribe. Uh, he's not going to bother asking whether or not she was watching him sleep because he understands that he's in her home. So he almost expects that she would be a little bit wary and would be watching him in case he tried to do anything funny around her family. So he's not going to bother asking this. Lamb won't get in our way. Where is he? On the way to his death if he decided to go it alone. Or maybe he's in a hole somewhere, crying about how lonely he is. I don't care either way. Are we just going to leave Horgus and Anivia here? Getting you all out at once would be difficult. We'll let the injured woman recover. Do you think I'd like knowing there are uplanders sitting in our village? But trying to drag an injured person through the maze would be suicide. And don't even get me started on the other one. He's not going to get off his backside unless we send a litter to carry him. Are you sure the maze is the only way to the surface? When Duog hisses in irritation. Do I look like someone who doesn't know what she's talking about? Yes, I'm sure. There might be other ways, but not anywhere near here. I've never made it all the way through the maze, but every time I've smelled the change in the air. Anyone who can has no business being in there. They're as good as dead. If you don't believe me, you can wait for another guy to show up. But no part, but no one apart from me will get you where you need to go. Let's go. It's time to get out of here. Windowalk nights, nods, right. And another thing, you could have chosen not to listen to me, but you did. That means you have real strength in you. A strong person can take the truth, even if they don't like it. And the truth was on my side. I want to say, Windowalk averts her eyes. Thank you. You saved the tribe from a stupid mistake. They're alive now because of you. Now let's go to the boats. We'll get there fastest by water. Whoa! She still got dexterity damage after resting? That's not cool. Did, and is that... Well, no, she still got an AC of 19. So, okay, so... It's only reducing it by, by one. So it's not affecting her AC, but still. Leads on. That is highly uncool. Because I don't think I have a way to remove it. Oh, I already missed haste. <laughs> we could not get haste quickly enough. 
Y'all are walking too slow for me. Awesome. All right, first and foremost. I will help where I can. Man, get on up. Get on up! I will guide us. And you have chameleon buckbeat up front. That's fine. Just look right. Oh, you up here with her. Yeah, I guess that's cool. We'll work with it for now. Godspeed. We need to crawl through this crack in the doorway and then we're in. Trust me, I've done this plenty of times. Pretty sure there's supposed to be something up here. Any time now. Ah, there we go. I was about to say, how far do I have to go? And here we are. The heart quickens. And there we are. Whoops. And, and hey, look at that. Got a little something out of it. I don't think there's anything else back here, though, right? Nope, looks like the answer is no. On. I don't see any uh, perception checks that fail. So we are free. Finally, go ahead and enter the maze. Squeeze through. Nothing, 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 nothing. I have a real love hate. Is done. Boss Relief of Baphomet, Demon Lord, Lord of the Minotaurs, and Lord of the Labyrinth. I have a real love-hate relationship with the maze. Like, it's definitely one of the harder sections of the game because you're so early, but I feel like it's a great way to introduce a lot of the mechanics as well. All right, I think this is a good place to stop the first episode. Hope you all enjoyed it thus far. Leave any comments or feedback you have down below. Uh, I'll probably try to record a couple of episodes back to back, but if you tell me some things that you feel like needed to be changed or improved it'll definitely be reflected on the new episode that i actually record but otherwise again hope you all enjoyed it i definitely had a great time doing this and i'm looking forward to getting further in the playthrough hope all of you enjoyed this video take care